as gunshots echo across the windswept, snow-covered reaches of the wild northwest, Quaker Puff Wheat and Quaker Puff Rice, the breakfast cereal shot from guns, present the challenge of the Yukon. It's Yukon King, swiftest and strongest lead dog of the Northwest, blazing the trail for Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted Police in his relentless pursuit of lawbreakers. On King! On your huskies! Gold, gold discovered in the Yukon, a stampede to the Klondike in the wild race for riches. Back to the days of the gold rush, with Quaker Puff Wheat and Quaker Puff Rice, bringing you the adventures of Sergeant Preston and his wonder dog, Yukon King, as they meet the challenge of the Yukon. <laughs> Here's a taste treat you want to repeat. It's Quaker puffed rice and Quaker puffed wheat. These famous ready-to-serve breakfast cereals are actually shot from guns to make them bigger and better tasting. They have a comeback for more nut-like flavor, a come-again tender crispness, and they're good for you. Yes, a delicious, nourishing treat, and so easy to serve. Make sure the big red and blue packages of Quaker Puff wheat and Quaker Puff rice are on your breakfast table every morning. Push! Push on! The moon was full, and the northern lights streaked across the sky, but the trail ran along the base of a thickly wooded slope, and the tall pines cast black shadows across it. Cass Evans urged his team to greater speed. Push that! Push that! Suddenly, a shot rang out from far up the slope. Cass ran forward, jumped on the sled, and lay flat. Push it, boys! Run! Run! Another shot kicked up the snow in back of the flying sled, and then another. Trail swung away from the hill and out of the shadows. Cass looked back. He could see nothing but a dark cabin huddled among the trees. No sign of a human being. He drove on toward Dawson. Push! Push! When he reached town, he unharnessed his dogs in back of the Palace Hotel, turned them into the run, and went directly to Northwest Mounted Headquarters. You're Sergeant Preston, aren't you? That's right. I'm Cass Evans. I own the Aurora Mine on Empress Creek. I know. What can we do for you? Well, to tell you the truth, I think someone's trying to murder me. What? Yes, I... Well, let me tell you about it from the beginning. Sit down. Thank you. In case you're not familiar with the Aurora, it isn't a placer digging. It's really a mine. We've driven our shaft straight into the hill. I remember when you started to operate. About a year ago, wasn't it? A little more than a year. We've been very successful. But three weeks ago, there was an accident. A cave-in. Some of the timbers gave away. I was in the mine at the time. In fact, I was the only one in there. Work had finished for the day. Were you near the cave-in? I was close enough. I could have been killed, but I wasn't. And actually, there was no great damage done. But it wasn't an accident, Sergeant. No? Someone had sawed almost completely through the timbers. I see. Hey, I believe I know what you're thinking. That it would have been hard to call it uh, an attempt on my life, an attempt to kill me personally, unless, of course, the timbers were weakened just before work ended that day or just afterward. You see, I make a habit of inspecting the mine just before I go to bed, and I do it alone. I test the timbers. You get what I mean, Sergeant? I can see the possibility. Well, that was the first time. But since then, I've been shot at twice while driving into Dawson. Once a week ago, and once tonight. Well, that's something else again. Why didn't you report it a week ago? It was a single shot that time. Wooded country. I heard the bullet go by my ear, but it could have been a stray shot from some hunter's gun. You see anyone? No. But there were three shots tonight. And it was at the same spot on the trail. A good spot for an ambush. You see, the trail's at the bottom of a wooded slope. 
There's only one cabin along that stretch. Did the shots come from the cabin? No, no. Go on. Well, there isn't much more to tell, except that I found out who lives in that cabin. Yes? His name is Elliot. Tom Elliot, a prospector, young, new up here. And here's the funny thing. This Tom Elliot was at the mine on the day of the cave-in. He asked my foreman for a job. Mike was going to take him on. He had dinner at the mess hall with the men. And then he told Mike he'd changed his mind. Do you know this, Tom Elliot? I... I don't think so. And I didn't meet him at the mine. And one's dealing with murder, Cash, and tries to find a motive. I understand what you're driving at. And all I can tell you is that I have no recollection of knowing Tom Elliot during the past 11 years. The past 11 years? I don't remember anything. It's a strange thing, Sergeant. It certainly is. 11 years ago, a fisherman saw me thrown off a wharf in San Francisco. He pulled me out of the water. I had one bullet wound in my temple and one in my chest. And no memory of how I got them. And no memory of anything before that? A complete blank. What about your name? The initial C.E. on a handkerchief. I made up Cass Evans to fit them. Then you don't know who you are or where you came from? No, sir. And during the past 11 years, you've never seen a familiar face you couldn't place that might be someone you knew before? No, sir. Of course, I spent most of that time at sea or in China. Well, as C.E., you must have had enemies. Yes, someone who wanted to kill me at any rate. I've I've often wondered why. This Tom Elliott. Well, Mike says he's only about 25. Eleven years ago, he'd only have been 14. Elliot Evans. Would your name really be Elliot? Could he be a relative? <laughs> Mike says he doesn't look anything like me. Well, I think we ought to meet him and have a talk with him. How long are you going to be in town? Until late tomorrow afternoon, but I don't think you'll find Elliot at his cabin. It seems to be deserted. Who told you we lived there? A Texas Monte Carlo. I, I inquired when I was shot at a week ago. Must be Lookout Hill you're talking about. See, that's the place. The cabin's set back among the trees, about, oh, I should say, a hundred feet up the slope. I'll take a run out there tonight. Drop around here in the morning. I may have Tom Elliott waiting for you. No, uh, you understand, Sergeant. I'm not making any accusations. I understand. Still, there's enough circumstantial evidence against Elliot to justify our asking questions. Uh, I'll leave it in your hands. Good night, guys. Good night, sir. Oh, uh, just one more thing. When you asked Tex who lived in the cabin on Lookout Hill, did you tell him you'd been shot at? I haven't mentioned it to anyone but you, sir. Good. Good night. Good night. The sergeant called in one of the constables to take charge of the office. Then he and King headed for the Monte Carlo. Tex was behind the bar. Howdy, Sergeant. Howdy, Tex. <laughs> well, what's on your mind, Sergeant? A prospector named Tom Elliott. What do you know about him? Well, uh... Start with the description. You know, uh, you're better than the police file sometimes, Tex. Well, it's good business to remember your customers. Tom is young, Sergeant. I'd say about 24 or 5. About 5 foot 10 and about 180 pounds, clean shaven. Got dark curly hair, dark eyes, almost black. I think his nose must have been broken once. It's just a little crooked. But he'd be good looking if it weren't for the lines around his eyes and the way his mouth turns down like this. Oh, tough. <laughs> he tries to act tough. But when he laughs, you can't help but liking him. He don't laugh often. He lives in old trapper's cabin on Lookout Hill. Say, why are you interested in Tom, Sergeant? Does it have anything to do with Cass Evans? Oh, that's an interesting question. What made you ask it? The way the kid talked about him when we heard about the cave-in at the Aurora. What did he say? There'd be good riddance if Cass had been killed. Hmm. Do you have any reason for not liking Cass? Uh, shut up like a clam when I ask him. How long has it been since you've seen him? It's over a week since he's been in. What would you say if I told you that Cass Evans had been shot? Tom did it? Where? How did it happen? Is Cass hurt bad? No, he hasn't been shot. But I take it you'd suspect Tom if anything happened to Cass. Well, from the way he talked and the way he looked, there was a hundred proof hate in those black eyes of his. Did Tom talk about Cass to anyone but you? Well, the place was crowded. Always is. Lots of people must have heard him. Still, no, Sergeant, I'd find it awfully hard to believe that Tom could shoot Cass in cold blood. 
no matter how much he hates him. Just isn't that kind of an arm. You're a good judge of character, Tex. But there's only one thing for me to do, and that's to find out what's behind Tom's hate. That means we're hitting the trail for Lookout Hill, King. It was long after midnight when the sergeant reached the cabin on Lookout Hill. The sergeant of King started up the hill. Cass was wrong about the place being deserted, boy. Light in the window and dogs out and back. Of course, there may not have been anyone in the cabin when he drove by. Since the shots didn't come from the cabin, that's understandable, I think. Well, we'll see. You Tom Elliott? Yes. Sergeant Preston, Northwest Mounted Police. Uh, what do you want, Sergeant? Well, I have a talk with you. What about? About Cass Evans. I don't know any Cass Evans. He owns the Aurora Mine on Empress Creek. Oh, I guess maybe I've heard of him. And had a lot to say about him in the Monte Carlo. Oh, that I... I must have been drunk. Uh, I, I don't know Cass Evans. Well, if that's going to be your attitude, I'll have to arrest you and take you back to Dawson. Right. What for? Someone fired at Cass Evans from the woods near this cabin tonight. I didn't do it. You'll have a chance to prove it. Put on your pogger. You're coming back to Dawson with me. No, uh, listen, Monty. Up in your hands, you're covered. Uh, Keep that dog back or I'll shoot him dead. Back, King. Now, you, Sergeant. Step inside. Tell the dog to keep back. Stay outside, King. Shut the door, Tom. I'll take your gun, Sergeant. He had a gun in my back, Sergeant. I couldn't do anything. I couldn't warn you. Too bad you couldn't get rid of him, Tom. Too bad for you, Sergeant. What was your objection to my arresting him? Why, Sergeant, what would be the use of Tom going to jail for Cass Evans' murder until Cass is dead? <laughs> I guess maybe we'll have to blame him for your murder, too. We'll continue our adventure in just a moment. Say, fellas and girls, it won't be long now. I mean until the new year, 1950, is here. Well, I am here. Uh, great Scott, where did you come from? Well, I guess I shouldn't really be here uh, yet. Why, you're a baby. Gosh, you haven't got any clothes on, that is, hardly. I mean, except for that big ribbon you're wearing. Well, see what it says on it? Sure do. It says 1950. That's right. That's who I am. Oh, so you're the new baby New Year. Right. Well, uh, you're a good day and some hours early, aren't you? Oh, well, I was just checking up. Oh? On New Year's resolution. Uh, made any? Me? Oh, you bet. And I was about to tell all the fellas and girls about a resolution everyone ought to make. Well, what's that? It's to eat a good, nourishing breakfast every morning the year round. Well, that's a swell idea. And so easy to keep, too. Especially if you include big heaping bowlfuls of swell-tasting Quaker popped wheat or Quaker popped rice with milk or cream and topped with fruit. Oh, sounds good. Oh, it is. Quaker popped wheat and Quaker popped rice are shot from guns to make them crisp and tender. Yes, these king-size premium grains are actually exploded up to eight times normal size to make them bigger and better tasting. And what's more important, too... Both delicious kinds furnish added food values of restored natural grain amounts of vitamin B1, niacin, and iron. You mean they're good for you? You bet. And for variety, you can eat Quaker puff wheat one day, Quaker puff rice the next. Boy, I can hardly wait. 1950 is going to see me trying them. And fellas and girls, don't you be missing out. In 1950, eat Quaker puff rice and Quaker puff wheat. The ready-to-serve breakfast cereals Shot from gun. Ask Mom to start the new year off with a breakfast treat that can't be beat. Get next to those big red and blue packages of Quaker puffed rice and Quaker puffed wheat. Now to continue. The hard-featured, black-bearded man who held a gun on the sergeant ordered him and Tom Elliott to sit down on the cot in the corner of the one-room cabin. Then he settled himself in a chair near the stove. I'm not going to take a chance on tying you two up until Bryant gets back. 
But if either of you make a move, I'll shoot. I've seen you around Dawson. They call you Laramie, don't they? Some folks do. Were you the one who fired the shots at Cass Evans tonight? No, it was the other one. The one called Brant, Sergeant. Oh. Shut up. What can you do to make me? I can pull this trigger. <laughs> well, sooner or later anyway. I've been a prisoner here for more than a week, Sergeant. Twice they've tried to shoot Evans. If they'd succeeded either time, they'd have put a bullet through me and left me lying near the trail. It would have looked like a gunfight with two casualties. Great scheme. Only Brant can't shoot straight. <laughs> Your boss won't like it when he finds out he's failed again, Laramie. Shut up! Who is their boss, Tom? I don't know. Somebody who tried to kill Evans a long time ago and... Well, he's afraid that Evans will recognize him and send him to jail. You oh. talk too much, Junior. You've been doing the talking all week. I may have to keep you alive, but there's nothing to stop me from beating your head in. Don't try it, Laramie. My hands are perfectly free, remember? Go on, Tom. They plan to pin the blame for Evans' murder on you because of what you said at the Monte Carlo, right? Mm, that's right. Now, don't, don't take any of that, that back. I have no sympathy for him. Why not? not? Because he's my father. Your father? And you find that a good reason? He deserted my mother and me when I was only 13. Left the two of us to run the ranch, went to Frisco with a load of cattle, and never came back. <laughs> it's a sad story. Save your laughs. It gets sadder. We lost the ranch, and Mom died. She was always sure that something had happened to Power. He'd have come back to us. I'm glad she never found out the truth. What truth? That he just ran away and left us, changed his name so we couldn't find him. When I think of it, him, the owner of the Aurora, with all the money in the world, and but just a few dollars would have meant to mop. You've got it all wrong, Tom. Yeah? Yes. Now that I finally have it straight... King! What's up? In response to his master's voice, the great dog King, who had been lying just outside the door, threw himself against it. For the fraction of a second, Laramie turned his head toward the door, and the sergeant was on top of him. As they rolled on the floor, the sergeant held Laramie's gun hand away from him. One shot went into the ceiling, and then, with relentless pressure, the sergeant twisted Laramie's wrist. The gun skidded across the floor. Get it, Tom. I got it. All right, you. Stand up. Good thing you didn't look through my pocket. He'd have found these handcuffs. They look better on you than they would on me, Laramie. What have I done? You mean, what have you accomplished? Nothing, I'm glad to say. But you've shown enough criminal intent to put you in jail for a long time. All right, King, I'll let you in, boy. All right, fella, it's all right. Sorry to have worried you. Good work, King. Sergeant, you said I had it all wrong. What did you mean? Tom, you heard Laramie say that his boss tried to kill your father once. I didn't have anything to do with that. I never met Dexter until he hit Dawson two months ago. So it's Dexter, the promoter. Thanks very much. Dexter and Brent. But about Pa? He was shot, Tom. Motive was robbery, I suppose. He was thrown into the harbor for dead, but he was rescued. Well, then why didn't he come home? Because he lost his memory and never regained it. He changed his name because he didn't know his right one. His only clue is the initials on a handkerchief, C.E. And Mom was right all along. Yes. His name is Charles Elliott. Wouldn't you like to tell him that, Tom? You know I would, Sergeant. Lost his memory? Then he couldn't have sent Dexter to jail. Dexter had nothing to be afraid of. He has now. And so have we until Dexter's behind bars. Sergeant, there's Brant, too. He's coming back here. If he's still in Dawson, we'll pick him up there. And if we meet him on the trail, he'll join our party. Let's go. As they started out with Laramie riding the sergeant's sled and Tom driving his own, Ben Dexter was pacing the floor of his room in the Palace Hotel. Brant was sitting on the bed. All the stupid, blundering fool. I told you how it was. I thought I hit him with my first shot. Ah, you thought. He dropped on his sled. Never mind, never mind. You were promised $10,000 to kill a man and you missed. You got away. It won't happen again. No, because the next time I'll see the job is done right. What's more to be done tonight? Here? In the hotel? Now listen. Do you know his dogs? I ought to. I saw them often enough when I was working up at the mine. Can you pick them out of the run in back of the hotel? Sure. Do you know his sled? Yeah. Then go downstairs, the back way. Get his team harnessed. <coughs> right away. Now wait, that isn't all. After you finish harnessing the team, walk around to the front of the hotel and into the lobby. Yeah? Now ask the clerk what room he's in. Say that you have an important message for him that must be delivered in person. 
I got you. When you got the number of the room, climb the stairs to the second floor. Wait there for a few minutes. Then go back to the clerk. Tell him that he must be out. He didn't answer your knock. Yeah, but the key of the room, if the clerk doesn't have his key... A man doesn't always turn his key in at the desk. Now, look, the clerk won't pay too much attention. He'll be half asleep at this hour. Now, do you understand? Yeah. I say he didn't answer my knock. So you leave the hotel by the front way. Go round and back. Use the back stairs and come up here. Oh, I got you. Then you and That's me... That's all you have to do. Come back here after you're finished and I'll take charge. Right, boss. Grant followed Dexter's instructions. But it was nearly half an hour later when he returned to the room. Well? All set. Been gone long enough. Oh, I had a little trouble finding the sled and then the dog started to bark. I beat him good and they shut up. Anyone see him? No. All right. What's the number of his room? 210. Just below this one. Good. Now, when he opens the door, I want you to hit him once with the butt of your gun behind the ear. Knock him out, but don't crack his skull. Okay. I'll put this lamp out. Come on. The two men walk swiftly down the corridor to the back stairs, then down the back stairs to the second floor. Now they walk slowly, very softly. Ben struck a match. This is it. I don't want to knock too loud, but I've still got to wake him up. A message, Mr. Evans. It's important. Get him. I wanted to make sure. Come on, inside the room. Now, we tie him, dress him, and gag him, and take him out to look out here, where you can try to put a bullet in him, this time at close range. When the sergeant, Tom, and Laramie reached Dawson, their first stop was at the Northwest Mounted Headquarters, where Laramie was locked up. Then the sergeant and Tom drove on to the Palace Hotel. Looking! Hey, looking! After 11 years, I don't think your father will mind being wakened. Come on. Come on, King. As usual, Johnny's sound asleep. Wake up, Johnny. Uh, 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 oh. oh, Sergeant. I must have dozed off a little. Just a little. What room's Cass Evans in? 210. Thanks. No, but say, he isn't in. At this hour? What? Well, it's practically morning, isn't it? When to go out? Well, oh, I, I didn't see him go out. And you probably didn't see him come in. No, I, I mean, this was only about 15 minutes ago. A fella came in and asked for him. I told him 210, and he went up. In a few minutes, he came down again, said he'd knocked on the door, and no one answered. Someone asked for him this time of night. I think he works at the Aurora forgotten his name, a big guy with a red beard. Sergeant, that's Brant. Johnny, how long was he upstairs? Just a few minutes. Are you sure? It only seemed to be a few minutes. Come on, Tom. The sergeant, Tom and King, ran up the stairs. There was a hanging oil lamp at either end of the corridor. Halfway down it, the sergeant could see the dim forms of two men. They were carrying another man. Sergeant, there's Brant now. Somebody's coming. Get out of here fast. The back way. Ben Dexter shot up the lamp over the back stairs. He and Brant dropped Cass, ran for the end of the corridor. The sergeant ran after him. He leaped over Evan's still form and caught Brant just as he reached the stairway. Come here, you. He grabbed the shoulder of his pocket and whirled him around. His right crashed into the red-bearded jaw, and Brant staggered back against the wall. His hand went for his gun, and the left knocked him down. The sergeant jerked Brant's gun from its holster. Watch him, King. The sergeant ran to the end of the corridor and opened the window. In a second, he climbed through and dropped to the ground near the rear door of the hotel. As he scrambled to his feet, Ben Dexter came through the door holding a gun. Preston charged from the side. Hey, what the... Ben turned, but too late to swing the gun around. The hard impact of Preston's charge jolted the gun from his hand. Ben tried to turn back into the hotel, but the Mountie grabbed his left wrist and twisted his arm behind his back. Don't, don't, don't. You've gone far enough, Dexter. You're under arrest in the name of the Queen. Dexter and Brandt joined Laramie in jail that night and Tom's father was taken to the hospital. He had a slight concussion, and it was morning before he opened his eyes. 
He saw the sergeant, King, and Tom standing beside his bed. Sir, you pressed him. Hello, Charlie. 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 That is my name, isn't it? You remember? Yes. My head. Something has happened to my head. You were hit and hit hard. But it seems to have brought back your memory. I know. I'm not Cass Evans. I'm Charlie Elliott. Do you remember your son? My son. Hello, Pa. Tom. It's been so long. You were only a boy. And now you've come up here to... No, Charlie, you're wrong. Tom had nothing to do with those attempts on your life. There's a man named Dexter who was trying to kill you. Do you remember him? Remember Dexter? Dexter. After that, he sold the cattle. The man who robbed me. The man who shot me. Easy, Paul. Yes, Charlie, there's no need to get excited. We know all about it. Dexter's in jail, and so are the two men who were working with him. They'll stay there for the rest of their life. All you have to do is rest easy. But, Tom, there are so many questions. You can wait. You'll have a little long time to get acquainted with your son. I'll be right here, Pa. Good Come on, King. The case is closed. <laughs> In just a moment, Sergeant Preston will give you a preview of Monday's adventure. Well, sir, fellas and girls... Next Sunday is the first day of a new year. And right here is someone who wants to say something to each and every one of you. Here is Sergeant Preston himself. And naturally, I don't have to tell you that King is here, too, right beside you. <laughs> Fellows and girls, King and I just want to wish you a happy new year. May the coming year be the finest, the happiest ever for you and your family. How about it, King? <laughs> That's King's way of saying for the both of us, Happy New Year. And Sergeant Preston, that goes for me and all of us here. And for the Quaker Oats Company, makers of Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice. Yes, from all of us, a Happy New Year to one and all. Listen Monday when Sergeant Preston and Yukon King meet the challenge of the Yukon in the case of... Rainbow's End. When Andy Miller was released from prison and paroled to me, I found him to be a likable young man determined to make good. His conviction had been based on circumstantial evidence, and I decided to reopen his case. This decision took King and me on a strange trail that was marked by murder. Be sure to hear this exciting adventure Monday. These radio dramas, a feature of the challenge of the Yukon Incorporated, are created and produced by George W. Trendle, directed by Fred Flowerday, and edited by Fran Stryker. The part of Sergeant Preston is played by Paul Sutton. They are brought to you every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at the same time by Quaker Puff Wheat and Quaker Puff Rice, the breakfast cereal shot from guns. For a delicious hot breakfast, eat Quaker Oats. The giant of the cereals is Quaker Oats. Delicious, nutritious, makes you feel ambitious. The giant of the cereals is Quaker Oats. Say, boys and girls, do you want to be a star someday in sports and activities? Then start on good Quaker Oats breakfast tomorrow. Because nourishing oatmeal gives you more growth and endurance than any other whole grain cereal. Remember, Quaker and Mother's Oats are the same. This is Jay Michael wishing you goodbye, good luck, and good health from Quaker Puff Wheat and Quaker Puff Rice.